Riverside Church this morning. Not only those in attendance, but those that are watching online, we welcome you. Welcome each and every one of you. Before we get to the announcements, I want to remind everybody about the attendance pads that are located on the inside of inside of the pews. You'll register your attendance. Also, if you're a visitor with us, we'd like to welcome you and we invite you to, to fill out the, the form in the bulletin that gives us a little more information about you. So we're glad you're here. <coughs> Okay, so a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, concerning, the first one is concerning the staff parish uh, cash gifts for church staff. Uh, 
And we leave those by next Sunday, I guess, the 18th. So if you uh, if you make your check, make it a check, just uh, mark it as staff uh, staff Christmas, or you can just give cash to uh, any of the staff parish committee members. Scott, have you got them out? Yeah. Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Next Sunday, the 18th, uh, I'm just going to call it our music Christmas program. We're going to have the kids singing. We're going to have the handbells playing. We're going to have the choir singing. We're going to have either two or three special music from different people and familiar faces. Uh, we'd love to see you all here. Um, it's going to be great. I'm so excited. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think there's been a little confusion we want to, want to clear up this morning about our Christmas Day service. Uh, I think it has been uh, conveyed as 1030, but it's actually 10 o'clock. Dawn is shaking her head, uh, nodding her head, yes. So our Christmas Day service will be one, one service, but it'll be at 10, 10 a.m. on Christmas Day. Our Christmas Day service will be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Christmas Eve, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And we're having trivia afterwards with the snack that we will all give away. Any other announcements this morning? Have handheld practice. Wednesday, 645. Wednesday, 645, and uh, Please stand to favor.
remain standing for the Apostles' Creed, our affirmation of faith, found on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Sunday. If you'd like to do that, please see me after church, and I certainly uh, would be encouraged for you to do that. Uh, scripture reading today is from Isaiah, Isaiah 35. If you have your scripture pew Bible with you today, and you'd like to turn with us, that is on um, page 663 in the pew Bible. I'll begin reading the first verse, reading down to the tenth. Let us hear God's word. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and, and, and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the massy of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and a thirsty ground a spring of water, a spring of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. And the highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler nor even fools shall go astray. No lion shall be there. And nor shall there any rabies beast come upon it. And they shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion the singing, everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. And they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. 
just a few prayer concerns I want to lift up this morning, and maybe some more from you. Uh, I want to remember uh, Jeff's family, uh, Graham family had service this week for his brother. I want you to know we're praying for you and lift you up in our prayers. And also, I uh, want to remember um, uh, Gary Woody. He's actually watching online today. Gary, wants you to know we're praying for you. And uh, he has uh, he has some flu pneumonia, so be in prayer for him. So you know he's had soldier, soldier, shoulder surgery, and uh, so he needs your prayers. There might be some more. Uh, Freda's getting better, and she sees at home today. And uh, is there anyone else? Unspoken. Unspoken. Yes. Remember Wilburn Lowry? Anyone else? I hope Joe is doing better. Remember him in our prayers. It's good to have some folks back with us we hadn't seen in a while. Glad to have you here. And uh, we welcome you. We also have visitors and family and friends. Hope to see many more new folks as we go through the holiday season. So always glad to have you. Wish them happy birthdays. Anyone else? Okay, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear gracious and loving God, we come before your throne of mercy and ask your God that you would just hear the prayers of your people. God, we do humble ourselves in this moment and are very thankful for all the blessings that you give us. And most of all, Lord, the answer to prayer, Lord, those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, may we realize and recognize, Lord, that you are ever present with us, and Lord, we are so thankful. God, we do pray for those that are watching online today that, are, that have been sick. We pray, dear God, for a special uh, hand upon them. And also, Lord, we pray for your healing and guidance in these days to come. God, as we wait upon your son Jesus to arrive, Lord, in the form of a child, Lord, we just humble our hearts in your presence and Thank you, dear God, for this greatest gift. And God, as we pray today, let us be reminded of the prayer you've taught us to pray. So we join together boldly, Lord, as your, as your servants, and Lord, as your children, as in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn for this morning is going to be number 224 in your hymnal. Good Christian friends, rejoice. Please stand in faith.
Now it's time for our children's time. Jump up on down. guys this morning. Y'all enjoying the snow outside? What? Oh, there's no snow here. Okay, I saw some on TV and I thought maybe it was having here too. Do what? When the rain is go, it's snow. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. I like that. Are you going to be a weatherman someday? You going to be a weatherman? Nope. Okay. See, he's going to be a man there. How's that? That sounded good. Dad like that. I got a scripture for you guys today, and it's talking about being a friend. Am I your friend? Good, awesome. I'm your friend. I'm glad to be your friend, and I hope that we can always be friends. And I, it says, you know, that we're kind of like servants, you know, when we're serving God. But He says something here in the scripture reminds us that we're not just servants, but we're friends. And to be a friend is a big deal, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of a big deal. So it says here in John 15:15. 15, 15, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. And so we're all friends with God today. And I want to tell you a story about a man who was, who was walking this path every day. And he was walking by cows. Have you ever seen cows? Have you ever seen cows? Bulls and cows and all that stuff. And they're kind of neat to watch. But this one cow, every day he walked by, the cow would come out and meet him at the fence. Have you ever paid a cow? you ever paid a cow? you never paid a cow? Have you ever paid his cow? Sometimes I ask him to let you go out there when the cows are real calm. Not, not the wild ones, but the calm ones. They're always calm. That's cool. Yeah, they're always calm. Well, see, I used to pet cows sometimes. We'd rub them. Cow has milk, and that's where, I'm, that's where my story's going. I want to tell you about that. And so he had a favorite path he'd walk by every day. It was the edge of town. This guy had all this cattle out there. And he said he noticed that there's one cow kept coming to him all the time. It was a little red uh, barn cow. And it would come over there too. It was small. And he stopped there every day. And he'd see this cow. And this cow would come up to him. He'd rub the cow on the forehead. And it was the cow was just kind of standing there checking things out. And it went on about week after week. And he noticed the cow wasn't there anymore. And he said, well, what happened to that little cow? So that, that cow was coming to the fence every day to see me. And now it's gone. And then he saw one of the, the, the farmer's boys out there, and he asked him, he said, what happened to that little little cow? He said, um, and he called him Sonny because he had like a red head. He called him Sonny. And he said, well, I'll tell you what happened. He said, the, the cow in that big red barn over there is now in training to be a milk cow. So... Before it was out there just kind of doing his thing, being a servant, you know, but now he's trying to be a milk cow. And the little boy said, he said, I'm so happy that now he's got big enough, that the cow's got big enough, that now it's going to be a milk cow. And it'll help supply milk to all of our family and our farms. And so now it's, and he said, it's, it's, it's our, one of our best. And he said, well, that cow is like my best friend. I saw him every day out here. And he said, well, he's still your best friend, but now he's part of the bigger family. He's part of the bigger family. And that's the way we are. We're kind of out there in the world, and then Jesus meets us, and then he invites us in the family. And we're no longer servants, not just servants, but now we're part of the family, right? And so we're his friends. So let me let me see this. It says, the little boy said he was so happy. He said, I will, I will still get to see my little friend, uh, the cow, Sonny. But now I know that my best friend, Jesus Christ, is also, I'm able to see him. So let's pray together, all right? God, we pray for the things, Lord, that remind us that we are not just not just servants, but Lord, we're part of the whole family. And Lord, we're not just, and when I say servants, Lord, we're not outside, but we're inside. We're brought inside the fold, inside the family. Just like this little cow, Lord, is brought into the barn to take training, Lord, to learn how to how to be a, a milk cow, to feed the family. And Lord, that's part of the family. So Lord, help us realize the best friend we have is you. And Lord, you're always there for us in the name of Jesus. And I got you a little friend inside this bag too. So when you get that, you'll see something there. So y'all get your bags. Okay. 
And Miss Katie, Miss Kate is waiting on y'all at the elevator. Invite our ushers to come now to receive our morning offering. Let us pray. God, it is with uh, great humbleness that we thank you for all the gifts that you give us each day. God, we thank you for loving us, for caring for us, for walking in our paths that we walk forward with you. Now, Lord, bless the gift and the giver, and we give you all the thanks and all the glory in the name of Jesus. Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. And let us hear God's word again. It's on page 11 of, that's kind of strange, chapter 11, page 11, 2 through 11. So that was not my own purpose. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one? who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and what you see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense to me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak, to the crowds about John. What did you go into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind. What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes. 
Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. And what then did you go out to see, a prophet? Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John, that no one has risen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. So I was praying on my sermon and talking and thinking about where God might be leading us today. The question that John asked, are you the one that we've been expecting? Are you the one we've been waiting for? I begin to think that sometimes we in society and also maybe even in the church sometimes, we may be expecting someone else. Let's think about that a minute. Sometimes we may be expecting someone else. I've heard said that about pastors. I've heard that said about me. People get a new pastor and they say, well, you're not really what we were expecting. <laughs> Some of you say that more now than you did before. <laughs> but I want to tell you a story, a true story, about a pastor that was assigned to a very large Metropolitan Church. It was a church that was very respected in the community, a very large church. All your people that had any kind of name or anything went to that church. It was probably just as, as popular as maybe the Presbyterian Church or one of those churches in Washington, D.C., where you know, the presidents they go to and some of the dignitaries and congressmen and senators. It was a very prestigious church that had a lot of well-known names in it. And, and they expected their pastor to be well-educated. Somebody who knew the Bible was able to converse with about anyone they spoke to. A pastor who not only knew the Bible, but knew the traditions and the ways of that community that they would not necessarily upset the norms uh, in that society. And so they heard about this pastor who was coming, who was well respected, had a longevity of success in the churches that he had served. They really had that only seen, the ones that only really had seen him was maybe the selection committee or the, the pastor's committee, or as we would say, the pastor parish relation committee, staff committee. They knew him on a surface level. And he was just what they wanted. They thought. But this pastor decided to do something that was a little unorthodox. <laughs> He decided that on the first day that he would be pastor of that church, he would preach. And no one had really talked to him up to this point, except on, maybe on the phone. That he would dress up as a homeless person. And he would be outside the church, maybe an hour before the church started, in a place that a lot of homeless people had been before. He was... A lot of panhandlers and those that had been outside, those that were begging for money, those who were needing assistance, they would flock to this church because it was a church with a lot of resources. And so there he was in his old clothes, dirty clothes, his uh, smelly clothes, dirt on his face, with a card saying, please help me, God bless you. And many of the church people, as they passed by, had to pass by this man who was their pastor, dressed up in an unorthodox way. And as they passed by, some shooed him away and said, we're not giving you any money. You know, we're just, please, leave us alone. We're trying to go to church. Some stopped and tried to offer assistance, very kind to him. And some just looked the other way. But this pastor, a.k.a. homeless man, 
continued out there. And then it come time for the service, and somebody even said, you ought to come to church. And he said, I might just do that. So he went inside the church, and he sat down. Some looked and gawked at him and said, who is this guy? And do we need to call security? <laughs> you know, we got to have security nowadays because they never know, know what's going on. Some tried to shoo him outside because he was not really, didn't fit the mold of the church of what we thought. And the time came for the pastor to come up front and one of the deacons or leaders of the church got up and said, we'd like for now our pastor to come. And they all looked to see if they could find the pastor. Where is the pastor? And this man got up, this homeless man, in his terrible clothes and rags, and he came up front. And he began to pull, peel off his outer garments in his regular just street clothes. And he said, I am pastor so-and-so. I've been sent to you to be your pastor. And you could almost hear the air begin to leave the building. It was not what they expected. He was not what they expected. Is this the guy that we've been waiting for? This guy who plays these pranks or whatever, or this kind of thing that he's doing, is this what we got to deal with? But he made a very poignant uh, lesson for them. He may not have been what they expected, but he was what they needed. Amen. And so he came and he began to minister to that church and that church began to not only grow, but began to see parts of the ministry they had not exceeded in before. Well, John, John was asking the same questions maybe those people were asking. Are you the one we've been expecting? You're not what we thought we were getting. As some of you may have said when I came in. Amen, Tony? He said, hallelujah. But John asked the question. He said, are you the one that, that is to come? Are you the one we wait for? And then Jesus answers in the way he always does with questions. He said, go tell John what you hear and see. The blind are receiving sight. The lame are walking. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor have good news brought to them. He's not what we expected. That's what the people may have said in that church. But later would say, but he was what we needed. Jesus came into this world not what we expected. We expected a ruler to come, or at least those people in that time did. A ruler who would come and that would subject those people who were once our enemies to be our footstools, to be put at our feet, to become our servants. And that we would become the powerful ones that God would lift up. But Jesus came in the form of a baby. That's not what we expected. That's not the king or ruler we were looking for. We expected someone like maybe one of the Marvel characters, the Hulk or, or Thor or something. I mean, we expected this great ruler to come. There's a lot of things that happen in the Bible that were not as we expected. I mean, think about, uh, you know, the giant in David. I mean, you think about that. I mean, little David, the shepherd, would overcome the giant. That's not what we expected. Even the giant laughed at him when he saw him. But who's laughing now, right? A lot of situations in the Bible is not exactly what we expected. And in our life today, as we look for Jesus, we find Jesus in some unexpected ways. When we get to know people that we thought were not like us, we find out they have very similar 
troubles and pains as we do. And they're seeking the same things. So I ask you to be a little open with your mind today to hear what John was told to do, the disciples to tell John. Look and see. Look and see. Hear and listen. Are the blind receiving their sight through Jesus? Are the lame beginning to walk because of Jesus and his touch? The lepers being healed and cleansed, the deaf being able to hear, the dead being raised. The poor having good news. This is who we needed. May not be who we expected, but it's who we needed. And on this Advent season, as we think about joy, the joy, the hope that we have, and also peace, is Jesus is coming. He's coming. And He is what we need. He may not be what we expected. Maybe we were expecting someone else. I was at a church one time. And... I was inside the church cleaning up. They'd had a wedding the night before. And it was a guy who was in the church. It was his only daughter. And he got caught up in all the, the celebration and didn't get back in time to get everything back in order for Sunday morning. So I was over there on Saturday night getting some things cleaned up to help them up. And this, this man come by. He saw the lights on the church and he was he come in. He said, um, I'd like to talked to the pastor, but he said, I guess you're not the pastor, you're probably the janitor, aren't you? I said, I can be. That's okay. That's a, that's a good job. But sometimes we see people and we, we have a prejudgment, don't we? We say, well, that's really not what I expected. But what does he say about that? He says, I tell you that John was probably one of the greatest, John the Baptist, Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. It's not what we expected. We didn't expect that God would elevate us that are the lowest to the greatest. We didn't expect him to take the last and make him the first. We expected the status quo where we see a hierarchy that goes down even in the church. But Jesus came and upset all that apple cart. And he said, the least among you shall be the greatest. Jesus is coming. He's coming very soon. And until that time, he said, Lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. And so today, when you think, well, that's not what I expected, then I'm going to ask you to expect a little bit more. Expect God to be who God said he was. Expect Jesus to give the sight to the blind, to give the hearing to the deaf, to allow the lame to walk again, to rise the, the dead from the grave, and to make all things new. And remember, he's going to surprise you. He'll surprise you today. The things that you expected won't work out exactly the way you thought. But they'll be even better. So maybe he wasn't what we expected. Maybe, maybe we wanted to come in a different way. But as one said after they got the pastor, he wasn't what we expected. But he's exactly what we need. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing us to realize that all the things that we assume or we expect, Lord, do not always turn out the way that we think is it should be. And, and Lord, but instead you step in and make things better. You make things, Lord, uh, the way they should be. Lord, you've elevated us from servant to friend. You've allowed us, Lord, to be more than just sit at the table, but, Lord, to participate, Lord, in the meal of our spiritual life. God, I thank you for these people here today, Lord, that have so many times done things that we just never expected, Lord. They've done even better than ever imagined. They have been your hands and feet. They have walked out of the world, Lord, to be a light shining in a world of darkness. God, forgive us. For not expecting you. But Lord on this Advent season. Lord we with anticipation. Look for Jesus to come. Emmanuel. God is with us. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray.
Our closing hymn for this morning is going to be number 242 in your hymnal, Love Came Down in Christmas. Please stand, if able. start, you know, I start out with taking the offering and lay later and you know, somehow the Lord just moved me around in so you never know. Gracious God, we leave this place now to go out in the world to be the church. We pray, dear God, you let us be the hands and feet of Christ. And Lord, let us remember that things are not always that we expected, but Lord, it can be what we need. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, and all God's people say it. Amen. Amen.